Prihatin to benefit all quarters affected by COVID-19. COVID-19 death toll rises to 26. 130 new cases today. You're watching News on 2 with me, Brendan Lipal. Now, Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin today announces a more comprehensive people-centric economic stimulus package in facing COVID-19 pandemic to help ease the burdens of Malaysians, especially throughout the Movement Control Order MCO period. The economic stimulus package totals 250 billion ringgit. On the same note, today's 250 billion ringgit Prihatin Rakyat Economic Stimulus Package announcement includes a fiscal injection of 22 billion ringgit, government guarantees totaling 55 billion ringgit, and other initiatives involving more than 153 billion ringgit. The total includes the 20 billion package announced previously. Daripada jumlah ini hampir 128 bilion disalurkan untuk melindungi kebajikan rakyat, 100 bilion ringgit untuk menyokong penyagaan termasuk perusahaan kecil dan sederhana PKS dan 2 bilion ringgit untuk memperkukuh ekonomi negara Malaysia. Manakala sebanyak 20 bilion ringgit telah diumumkan dalam pakej rancangan sebelum ini. In his speech, the Prime Minister said the government's priority at this time is to curb the spread of COVID-19. An allocation of 130 million ringgit has also been announced and will be distributed equally to all states, regardless which political party is heading it to help tackle the COVID-19 pandemic. On a related note, Tan Sri Muhyiddin said frontline healthcare workers will receive special allowances as part of the Prihatin Rakyat Economic Stimulus Package. He said the government will provide special stipends to doctors, nurses and other medical personnel directly involved in the management and containment of the deadly COVID-19 infection. Sebagai menghargai pengorbanan mereka, Kerajaan akan meningkatkan allowance khas yang diterima daripada RM400 kepada RM600 sebulan mulai 1 April 2020 sehingga wabak ini berakhir. According to Tan Sri Muhyiddin, the added incentive is given as the government is aware that during these trying times, healthcare staff are worn out and feeling pressured. However, the Premier calls on everyone to stay strong to fight this great challenge. 
The government also agreed to allocate 10 billion ringgit to help those in the M40 group and below affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, Tan Sri Muhyiddin said the aid will be channeled through the Banjuan Prihatin Nasional, one of cash payment, which would also first, which is also a first for the M40 household income group in terms of cash aid. The recipients include private sector employees, Felda settlers, farmers, fishermen, petty traders and all those in the M40 group and below. Pertama, RM1,600 ringgit kepada hampir 4 juta isi rumah yang berpendapatan bulanan RM4,000 ringgit dan ke bawah. Bayaran RM1,000 ringgit akan dibayar pada bulan April 2020 dan 600 pada bulan Mei 2020. Kedua, RM1,000 ringgit kepada hampir 1.1 juta isi rumah yang berpendapatan lebih RM4,000 sehingga RM8,000 yang akan dibayar pada bulan April 2020 sebanyak RM500 dan baki RM500 pada bulan Mei. Ketiga, RM800 kepada 3 juta individu bujang berusia 21 tahun ke atas dan berpendapatan bulanan RM2,000 dan ke bawah. Bayaran RM500 akan dibayar pada bulan April 2020 dan baki RM300 pada bulan Mei 2020. Keempat, RM500 kepada 400,000 individu bujang berusia 21 tahun ke atas yang berpendapatan bulanan lebih RM2,000 sehingga RM4,000. Bayaran sebanyak RM250 akan dibuat pada bulan April 2020 dan bakinya RM250 pada bulan Mei. The Prime Minister ended his speech with a call to the people, describing the current situation as a war with invisible forces. We are a nation at war with invisible forces. The situation we are now facing is unprecedented in history. And this government may not be the government that you voted for, but I want all of you to know that this government cares for you. I accepted the fact that I came in as Prime Minister, as your Prime Minister, not at the best moment. I face political, economic and health crisis all at the same time. And this unprecedented situation, of course, requires unprecedented measures. So my dear brothers and sisters and the children of this beloved country, whether you are a Malay, Chinese, Indian, Sikh, Iban, Kedazan, Dusun, or Asal, please bear with me. And of course, my friends in the cabinet and the government. We are not perfect, but we are doing the best we can to pull through this crisis together as one nation. And God willing, we'll come out stronger when this crisis ends and the dust settles. Inshallah. The Health Ministry today confirms that 44 positive COVID-19 cases were discharged, bringing the total cumulative of patients recovered from the outbreak to 259. Now, Health Director General Datuk Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah in his daily briefing today, however, also noted that the total COVID-19 death toll has risen to 26, with most of the patients who died were elderly and had a history of chronic illness. Sehingga kini terdapat pertambahan tiga kes kematian baru berkaitan dengan COVID-19 yang telah dilaporkan ke CPRC Kebangsaan. Ini termasuk satu kes pelaporan yang disiarkan di laman Facebook Ketua Pengarah Kesihatan pagi tadi. Justru jumlah kumulatif kes kematian COVID-19 di Malaysia adalah sebanyak 26 kes iaitu dengan kadar kematian 1.1%. 
Dr. Dr. Noor Hisham also said that a total of 130 new COVID-19 cases have been recorded, bringing the total to 2,161. Presently, 54 COVID-19 patients in the country are admitted into the intensive care unit or ICU, with 34 cases requiring respiratory aid. The bulk of the patients continue to be from the Sri Pataling Tablet cluster. A total of 3,468 Malaysian citizens are still stranded at 61 countries due to travelling restriction measures imposed by respective countries following the COVID-19 pandemic. Deputy Foreign Minister Datuk Kamaruddin Jaffa said that the number has increased compared to yesterday's figures where only 2,982 Malaysian citizens were reported to be stranded in 55 countries. The increase, Datuk Kamarudin said, was because more Malaysians have registered as stranded at the Malaysian Embassy in Chennai, India. Setakat ini menerusi hubungan baik Malaysia dengan pelbagai negara, rundingan kita dengan sebahagian besar kerajaan negara-negara tersebut telah menemui hasil yang diharapkan. Namun rundingan dengan beberapa negara pula, khususnya berkaitan isu domestik di sana mengambil sedikit masa. The Deputy Minister also stressed that Wisma Putra has never practiced any discrimination in the repatriation process as to how it was spread in the social media. He also said that Wisma Putra is working hard to get an additional allocation of more than 19 million ringgit to bring those stranded in the countries where they are. No commercial flights at all. Meanwhile, a total of 51 Malaysians stranded in Egypt will be repatriated on Saturday by a special flight organized by the government of Brunei. Now, Datuk Kamaruddin said the Brunei government has agreed to allow Malaysians to board a flight for the repatriation of Bruneians from Cairo to Bandar Sri Begawan. The Deputy Minister said the Malaysian Embassy is currently communicating with the Brunei Embassy in Cairo on the repatriation process. Sehingga hari ini 27, 27 Mac 2020, seramai 86 rakyat Malaysia dilaporkan masih terkandas di Kaherak, Mesir. Namun demikian disebabkan kapasiti penerbangan kerajaan Brunei yang terhad, hanya seramai 51 orang rakyat Malaysia sahaja dibolehkan menaiki penerbangan tersebut. Dalam hal ini, keutamaan diberikan kepada warga emas dan pelancong rakyat Malaysia untuk pulang ke tanah air. Penerbangan ini dijangka tiba di Bandar Seri Begawan Brunei, Darussalam pada hari Ahad 29 Mac 2020 jam 8.40 pagi. The ministry also expressed gratitude to the Sultan of Brunei, Sultan Hassan al Bokia, for allowing Malaysians to board the flight. Several packages will be offered to telecommunication industry players to ensure the people are able to connect and conduct their daily activities online throughout the Movement Control Order MCO period. Malaysia Communications and Multimedia Commission, or MCMC, in a statement explained that the 1 billion ringgit package is the outcome of cooperation between national telecommunication companies that also include efforts to improve internet connectivity. Among the packages offered is 600 million ringgit with free internet coverage for all users. Postpaid users of Cellcom, DG, Maxis and U Mobile are eligible for this package. Users will be able to use high-speed internet with 1 gigabyte capacity every day from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. beginning the 1st of April until the end of the MCO period. Another 400 million ringgit was also prepared for network investment and to support increasing demand. MCMC also said that about 5,000 Telecommunication workers will be on duty to ensure internet connectivity remains uninterrupted, including hotlines and emergency phone lines in critical locations. 
Meanwhile, the 3 billion ringgit allocation that was announced during the first economic stimulus package on the 27th of February will be used to implement the National Fiberization and Connectivity Plan NFCP project. Now, borrowers of the National Higher Education Fund Corporation, or PTPTN, wishing to continue with the salary deduction or direct debit to repay their loan can submit their application, which is open from the 23rd of March to 15 August through the corporation's official portal. Now, PTPTN, in the frequently asked question on COVID-19, however, said existing borrowers who make repayment through salary deduction or direct debit and wish to postpone the repayment need not have to apply for cancellation of the deduction. PTPTN said the salary deduction or direct debit will be stopped for April until September 2020 except for borrowers who agree to continue with the deduction by applying at www.ptptn.gov.my slash COVID-19, the latest by 15 August this year. The government had agreed to extend the period from three months to six months for deferment of loan repayments by PTPTN borrowers involving a collection of 750 million ringgit. PTPTN borrowers are also not required to submit new application for salary deduction or direct debit after the end of the postponement period as the deduction will resume after that. The Malacca government is providing special assistance in the form of food kits and deferment of water bill payment for domestic consumers affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, Chief Minister Datuk Sulaiman Mat Ali in a statement said the two assistants were in addition to several initiatives that had been announced earlier by the state government to reduce the people's burden, especially the target group. According to Dato Sulaiman, the special food kit assistant is a one-off aid that will be handled by the respective land and district officers, Malaysians earning 3,000 ringgit and below, who are self-employed or paid a daily wage are eligible for the assistance. Dato Sulaiman said applications can be made online or directly at the Office of the Development and Coordination Committee in their respective state constituencies. On the deferment of the water bill payment, he said it is for the month of March and is expected to benefit 260,000 households in Malacca. Perak Menteri Besar Datuk Seri Ahmad Faisal Azumu will take a two-month pay cut and channel the money to the State Disaster and Social Assistance Fund. In a statement, the Menteri Besar said the move is in line with the Cabinet's decision to deduct their salaries for two months for the COVID-19 fund. Dato Sri Ahmad Faisal said the state government also encourages corporate bodies and the private sector to donate to the fund. Dato Sri Ahmad Faisal also expressed his deepest condolences over the first death of the COVID-19 victim in the state, a 62-year-old man who was originally from Kajang, Selangor. He also reminded the people in the state to be fully aware that the Hile, Pera and Kinta districts have been declared red zones following the detection of 48 and 41 positive cases respectively. In this regard, the Menteri Bursa once again called on the people to unite and cooperate efforts to break the COVID-19 chain by adhering to the movement control order. Still to come, five men sentenced to jail for violating movement control order. Seven men caught playing football and jogging at a field along DS Ramanathan Road in Penang yesterday were remanded for four days for violating the movement control order MCO. Magistrate Nor Azuin Abdul Muati issued the remand order after the men aged between 23 and 50 years were brought to the Georgetown court at about 10.20 a.m. today. 
Earlier, Northeast District Police Chief Assistant Commissioner Sofian Santong said a police patrol team caught the man playing football and jogging at the field at about 6.10 p.m. yesterday. He said they were immediately arrested and brought to the police station. Six of the men were believed to be playing football while one was jogging around the field. ACP Sofian said the man will be investigated under Section 269 of the Penal Code for committing a negligent act likely to spread infection of any disease dangerous to life. The section carries a jail sentence of up to six months or a fine or both upon conviction. They will also be investigated under Section 7, Subsection 1 of the Prevention of Control of Infectious Diseases, Measures Within the Infected Local Areas, Regulations 2020 for violating the MCO. A 21-year-old food delivery man who rammed his vehicle into a police roadblock was among five men charged and sentenced to jail for violating the Movement Control Order MCO. Mohamed Faiz Aiwan Mohamed Safi pleaded guilty to two charges at the Slayang Magistrates Court today. Mohamed Faiz was charged with voluntarily obstructing a public servant in discharging his duty, an offence under Section 186 of the Penal Code. The charge carries a maximum two years imprisonment and 10,000 ringgit fine or both if convicted. Mohamed Faiz was also charged with violating the movement control order, which required him to be within the confines of his home by going outside without reasonable excuse. The offences were committed at the Middle Ring Road 2, MRR2, Highway and at 1.45 a.m. on the 23rd of March. According to the statement of facts, Mohamed Faiz, who was travelling in a vehicle with two others at large, rammed through a police roadblock on the highway and broke a toll barrier at the Gomba Toll House. They tried to escape by heading to Bentong before the vehicle's driver lost control and hit a divider. Magistrate Nor Hafiza Rajuni sentenced Mohamed Faiz to two months in jail for obstructing a public servant on duty and one month in jail for violating MCO. The court ordered for the jail time to run concurrently from the date of arrest. At the same court, four other men were also sentenced to one month in jail each after they pleaded guilty to violating the MCO, which came into force on 18th March. Mohamed Ikwan Zainuddin, 30, P. Pratap, 32, B. Sinia, 37, and Liu Kok Leong, 41, pleaded guilty after the charge was read out before the court. They committed the offences in several different areas in Gomba and Kapong, Deputy Public Prosecutor Nor Shasha Hidaya Nor Azaha prosecuted. Now, in a bizarre turn of events, a man was detained with drugs in his car when he was checked by police at a COVID-19 roadblock in Georgetown last night. Police found Aramin 5 and several drugs paraphernalia upon carrying out an inspection on his car. Timo Laud District Police Chief ACP Sofian Santong said the 32-year-old suspect tested positive for drugs after a urine test was carried out. The suspect was remanded this morning under Section 39, Subsection A of the Dangerous Drugs Act 1952. Meanwhile, police in Pulau Pinang arrested 31 people for violating the Movement Control Order, MCO, which was introduced to curb the spread of the COVID-19 virus. They were charged under Section 186 of the Penal Code for obstructing public servants from carrying out their duties and Section 7, Subsection 1 of the Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases Measures Within the Infected Local Areas, Regulation 2020. A senior citizen was fined 2,000 ringgit by the IA Kuro Magistrate Court in Malacca after he pleaded guilty to the charge of slandering a friend by spreading via WhatsApp that the friend had been infected by the COVID-19 virus. Now, the sentence was meted out by Magistrate Mohammad Nazrin Ali Rahim against the accused Alia Samad 63. According to the charge sheet, the accused had made a statement in a WhatsApp group alleging that the father of the person who lodged the report was admitted to hospital on suspicion of being positive COVID-19, saying that he had come back from a tablet gathering and refused to be screened. The accused was alleged to have committed the offence at 9.26pm on 20th of March. The accused, who is self-employed, was charged under Section 505, Subsection B of the Penal Code, which carries a mandatory two-year jail sentence or a fine or both if convicted. If the accused fail to pay the fine, he will be sentenced to four months jail.
The postponement of the Tokyo 2020 Olympics is heartbreaking for national gymnastic queen Farah Ann Abdul Hadi, as performing at the Games has always been a dream since she was eight. However, the 25-year-old gymnast praised the decision to push the largest gathering in sporting event until 2021 amid the COVID-19 outbreak, adding that the welfare of athletes and the whole world should be the top priority right now. Farah Ann said it was good that the decision was made and now athletes could focus physically and mentally on preparing themselves for the Games with this new timeline. After almost qualifying for the 2016 Olympics in Rio, the Tokyo Olympics will be the main focus in her quest to make her Olympic debut. While feeling a bit disappointed with the current situation, which has affected her training program, she said it will only just fuel her spirit to prepare for the Games. The 2020 Olympic Games is scheduled to be held from the 24th of July to the 9th. That concludes this evening's news on two. In our top story, 250 billion ringgit stimulus package to benefit all quarters affected by COVID-19.